in this module we'll talk about ATP it's a very important molecule first of all let me tell you that not all processes in cells release energy they're processes that require energy for example when we are converting monomers we are linking monomers and creating polymers we require energy because you're going from order from disorder to order that is a process that requires energy so cells have to compensate the processes that require energy by by having some processes that release energy ATP is a molecule that can store energy in form of high energy phosphate bonds phosphate groups attached to other phosphate groups phosphate groups are negatively charged so having bunch of phosphate groups linked together is like compressing a spring just as spring can contain potential energy these phosphate bonds also contain energy the structure of ATP molecule is on the screen you can see the three phosphate groups attached to each other to the ribose sugar and which is attached to adenine this whole molecule we've already seen in our one of our previous modules ADP hydrolysis releases minus 12 kilocalories per mole that's a huge amount of energy this energy can be used to make the processes that require energy feasible let's look at an example so for example processes that require energy endothermic reactions for example building up protein molecules from amino acid in order to compensate the energy they require for these processes ATP can be used we can break ATP molecule release the energy use that energy to complete the processes that require energy so this is a cycle in the cell so processes that require energy get the energy from processes that release energy when they occur we have an example of exothermic reaction ATP hydrolysis of ATP ATP combining with a water molecule and releasing an energy of 7.3 kilocalories per mole I would like to mention in my previous slide I said that energy released from ATP hydrolysis is minus 12 that's the physiolo physiological value of uh, hydrolysis of ATP hydrolysis when ATP hydrolysis occurs inside the cell the amount of energy delta G is minus 12 here in this example we are going to consider delta G value of delta G as 7.3 kilocalories per mole another process in which glutamate is going to glutamine this process requires energy it requires 3.4 kilocalories per mole so where are we going to get this energy from so these two reactions are coupled ADP is hydrolyzed energy released from ADP hydrolysis minus 7.3 kilocalories per mole is used part of this energy is used to make a molecule of glutamine so overall the net result is if we add 7.3 in uh, and uh, 3.4 the net result the net change in delta G is minus 3.9 kilocalories per mole so we are subtracting basically 3.4 kilocalories from 7.3 kilocalories so if these reactions are coupled remember one is exothermic other is endothermic one is giving energy out other is taking energy in we can make these processes feasible also I would like to uh, say that there are processes that uh, that although they release energy they do not occur for example if we have 600 polyarginines we have talked about uh, amino acids arginine is a amino acid if we make a protein of arginines 50 percent of arginine uh, polyarginine will degrade it will take seven years for these amino acids to be released from this polymer although this is we are going from order to disorder the delta g is a minus number this process is extremely slow this process although is releasing energy does not occur very very quickly speed of the reaction is not dependent upon delta g speed of a reaction is a different uh, is a different entity depends upon a different entity altogether we'll talk about that in our next module however here i would like to mention that if we uh, use an enzyme for example carboxypeptidase it can accomplish the same uh, feat degradation of 
50% uh, poly arginine molecules in half a second. So, the speed of a reaction depends upon activation energy. We will talk about activation energy in our next module.